Mr. Yuval is the CEO of Social Bakers and has had more than 20 years of experience as an entrepreneur and executive in both private and public companies. He is the holder of 20 U.S. patents and a frequent commentator in the media and speaks regularly on technology topics. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Yuval. Good morning, good morning everyone. How everyone is doing today? Whoa, I'm so excited to be here today. Welcome to Engage Bali 2018. It is so great to be here. We are doing Engage for over six years, every time in a different place. And this is the second time we're coming here to Bali because of such a beautiful place and beautiful people coming here from all around the world. We're doing this for two years and so many things have changed since then, since the last time we've been here. What I'm saying two years, just from the beginning of the year, how many things change on social? The news feed has changed. APIs have changed. The UI of Snapchat have changed. We have so many things to talk about today, and I'm so excited about that. It's going to be one of our best engage ever. We have exciting announcements to share with you. We have Jan, our founder over here, and he's going to share with you exciting data from social media. And of course, our speakers that came from all around the world to share with you their stories. Just before we started, I spoke with a few of you out there. I met exciting people that are really passionate about social media, really want to create a conversation on that platform. And that's for me what makes Engage so unique. It's you. It's the people that are coming over here and participating in Engage. We in Social Bakers are in a journey of social media for 10 years. When we started, social media was just about 10 million users. There was almost no monetization there, but we had a vision. We had a vision that everything in the world will, have, will happen on social media. Could you believe that the President of the United States will be available there and you can have a conversation with him? We built our platform and focused mainly to make social media perform for you so you can make an impact on your business. We build the platform with billions of data points from everywhere. We are tracking data points from all the networks. We are tracking billions of dollars spent on the platform every day. So you'll be successful, so you'll be able to see the benefit of social media. We adding to the platform technologies like the latest machine learning and artificial intelligence. We have the most passionate developers and product managers leaving and reading social media all day long. The size of our platform is inspiring. The results that it brings to marketers from all around the world, it's amazing. And we are committed to our vision. We will continue to focus to make marketers on social successful and make the impact on their business visible to everyone. Are we ready to start? Let's start all and go live. Take your mobile phone out. This is a social media conference. Don't leave it in your pocket. Go to the Facebook and to the Social Baker app and click the share on our live stream. So everyone will be able to see that. Everyone will be able to have a conversation about social. And live is the format. Live is the format that drives most of the engagement on social today. We're seeing one out of five of videos is now being streamed on social media. This is amazing. Almost four times more time is spent on live streaming on social media. And this is something when we look on our data, when we look and compare the engagement of people between native video and live, throughout the stream, we're seeing more engagement with live video because people are asking for authenticity. People want to see what is happening now. They are more engaging. And this is the format today that you should focus on. It is free. It is organic. Most importantly, in the days where there's a lot of fake news, a lot of messages being sent out, people ask for something authentic, and live is authentic. It provides amazing performance, and believe it or not, 
it's very low cost to produce, much less than your actual native video. And when we put that into test, when we actually tested how live stream is actually performed, Yesterday, there were multiple broadcasts live from this conference, and I looked in our platform to see how they're performing comparing to other data uh, content formats. What you can see here is a screenshot from our platform showing the amount of engagement over time, and look where live is going there. Our platform automatically ranks your content and put it as an A class, and you're going to look at that and say, so what happened to my video? What happened to my photos? What about the links that I use to share everywhere? Why are they not getting the attention? It's all about the content type evolution. It's the user fatigue from, uh, from the type of content over time. You probably remember in the 90s, we were all sitting in front of big screen with our desktop, reading the blogs. Everyone was writing the blog. I had the blog, text, a lot of text. Well, it was a big screen. But then mobile came to the world, and everything shrank. And then people start to see the text, and it was by challenging. And the camera becomes so dominant. So photos become more and more engaging. People like to see more photos rather than read long text. But then, as the telco improved their networks, and mobile data become much more reliable and faster, videos start to get more and more engagement. And it's still a quite a strong uh, content type that people engage with. But now, when people ask for something immediate, for something authentic, they're all leaning towards live. Live streaming is the way to move forward. But it's not just about the type of content that you're using and the format that is being broadcast. It's also about how that content reached the audience. There was an evolution around that as well. Back in the 90s, when we used to go to a, a bookstore online, we were visiting the bookstore looking for a book. But then, when we are going to any other website, we started to get ads from that bookstore. It was targeting us with book, even books that we're not really interested in. So people start to ignore these kind of ads. So this is when personalization came to world. And personalization was more about trying to send you ads about these books, but relevant to you. So that started to work, and people engage with it a lot. But then people start to realize that even after I purchase the book, I'm still getting the same ad for the book. So they start to ignore it. And that was the time of behavior-based uh, targeting. And behavior-based is when the algorithm is starting to understand, based on the content that you read online, to understand what other topic you're interested in. Yes, I'm interested in books, but I'm also interested in golf and in sports car. And the ads start to serve to me with different type of interest. And people start to freak out. This is when privacy concerns start to come out. This is when ad blockers start to be installed in, uh, in a high volume. People start to say, hey, don't track me online. And then something really important happened about two, three years ago. This is when another channel to your audience appeared. And these are influencers. The influencers are the people that's your audience engagement. It can be the chef in their preferred restaurant. It can be the trainer. It can be the trainer in the gym. These are very important people that now be providing a very authentic communication with an audience. This is the digital version of word of mouth. And now live becoming more and more important. And this is the current trend. And you would ask me, so what would be the next format? It's hard to tell, but it's quite clear. Live is not going to stay for long. There'll be another format. People will start to engage more, even live. It can either be the 3D post that Facebook just released and announced about that, or it can be the augmented reality. If you're looking what Google is doing on Android or what Samsung did with S9, it's driving more into augmented reality. So make sure you are using the format that drives most of the engagement rather than keeping the same work you used to do in the past. But selecting the type of content that you're going to use and the format is one challenge. The second challenge for every marketer is what social network I should use. There are over 20 social networks out there, depending on size and region and the type of engagement. And you need to look at that and decide which one should I use, which one will provide the value that I'm looking which one will give the ROI that I need for my campaign? 
So we decided to put that into a test. And we look on three quite popular social networks in three different dimensions or with three different goals that marketers are looking at. So if your goal is a reach and you want to reach as many people, you're probably looking for the network with the largest audience size. And as we all know, Facebook at the moment is the largest social network available. So you will go into Facebook. Probably you're not going to use the other network. But you may have a different goal. You may look for a network where a lot of activities are happening, a lot of people posting, a lot of people uh, pushing more and more content. In that case, for you, that would be Twitter. But if you're looking for engagement, if you actually look for people that engage with your content and having conversation, what we're seeing now, this is happening on Instagram. Instagram is the platform where most of the engagement is happening. So it really depends. What is your goal? to select the preferred network. And these are just three cases. And when we look on the goal, and when we look on the objective of the ads, where you're actually putting your money and want to drive your business and drive to move the needle on your numbers, what we found out that most of you are actually looking for engagement. You're looking for people to interact with the content, to drive traffic to your website, or take a particular action. So if this is what you're putting your money on, if this is the most important objective of your ad, we shouldn't be surprised by the change that Facebook made earlier this year. The change in the newsfeed is all about to serve the relevant content to the relevant people at the relevant time, so it will, be, it will inspire conversation. Be relevant, be effective. This is the name of the game in 2018. It is very challenging. It's very easy for me to come here and say, do that. So how would you do that? How would you know what type of content to use? How would you select which network? How would you know how much to spend on every post that you do? This is quite challenging. The first thing every marketer does when they get the brief of the campaign is trying to understand their audience. Who is the audience this campaign is for? And which network are they engaging the most? Where are they? How should I speak with them? What type of content are they engaging the most? When we interview brands and when we interviewed agencies from all around the world and asked them the question, so how do you do that? We heard that they're spending weeks and sometimes months analyzing data, running interview, trying to process information and test information. And to do that in multiple locations around the world, to do that in scale, it's a quite challenging and time-intensive and resource-intensive effort. So I'm very, very excited today to make an announcement on an addition to our platform. On top of our platform that we spent 10 years doing performance measurement, benchmarking, we're adding a new model. It is called real-time omnichannel audiences as part of the Social Baker platform. This is an amazing addition to our platform that will be available for everyone starting in the second quarter. And this is how it's going to look like. This is part of our platform, integrated with all the components that you know, with all the features that you're familiar with. It will enable you to connect all the profiles, all the pages, even connect your web traffic into the platform. And in real time, it will show you the primary persona, the secondary personas, all across your network. And imagine, you'll be able to do that against your competitors. For the first time, you'll be able to see the audience of your competitors, their persona. And most importantly, we're not going to show you just the demographic and geographic. We're going to focus on the interest, because the interest of the people is what's driving that. And when we look on each of the audience, you will be able to see the affinity of this audience with other brands. So when you're thinking about your campaign, you will know what else my audience is interested in. I can focus on people just in Bali. I can focus on people in Brazil. I can focus on people in Germany and try to see what they like, what they engage the most. But this is not just about showing you the data. It actually has a brain. It actually drives action. With a single click on the bottom, you'll be able to create a campaign and target that particular persona. You'll be able to automatically get that content to that particular persona. And we tested it. We actually put our own money and tested this kind of technology. 
And we wanted to make sure what does it happen, what will happen if we are targeting an audience using this kind of a platform versus just posting the way most of you are posting online. What we found out is our CPA, the cost per action, went down almost 50%, five zero. This is an amazing. When you are targeting, when you know what audience you want to go after, this is when your price is going to go down. And it's not just that. We have even more. It's not just about targeting the audience. Your art team and the copywriters of the campaign always asking the question, so for this campaign, what type of content this type of persona engage the most? So as part of this new announcement and part of this new model, we're adding content recommendations. We're actually going to show you for that particular persona, like in this example, Eric that likes automotive, this is the type of content they engage the most. This is where they're having their conversation. This is the type of copyright that they like to have. So your team can look at that and be inspired and create your own unique content knowing that this is what your audience like. This is a very exciting announcement that we are making today and it will be available for you in Q2. And we're doing that because we know there is a very clear correlation between the relevance of your content to the cost and the engagement it creates. The system automatically ranks the content, and as you can see over here, the content in green, the A and A++, drives more engagement. The uh, click-through rate is much higher. As a result, the cost is much lower. You definitely want to be over there. You don't want to be at the bottom of this chart because pushing content further and spending more money is just becoming costly quarter of the quarter because the demand of marketer for more placement is increasing, but the supply of place in the newsfeed is getting challenging and more challenging. And this is why Facebook is making the changes on the newsfeed to make sure we balance that. So although in Q3 ads went up 35%, in Q4 and 43%, and we don't really know how much is gonna change uh, in the future, but this is something that is quite important for marketer. When you think about your campaign, it's not just about the persona. It's not just about the content. It's also how much is going to cost me to do that. And those kind of questions we are seeing in the last six months, more and more marketer leaning towards performance optimization, looking for solutions that will give them these kind of recommendations, what to promote, when to promote, how much to spend, and when we look in our own platform, in the last six months, there was an increase of 50% of marketers using this kind of technology to give them this kind of recommendation. And with the challenges in the newsfeed, we believe that's going to continue to go up and make you successful and make you driving your ROI and make an impact on your business. And we're achieving that using artificial intelligence. And a lot of you heard the name artificial intelligence, I'm sure, but most likely as a buzzword, as something that someone is talking about the presentation. We actually took that technology and put that on our platform. It actually drives number. It actually improves things. And artificial intelligence will take all the heavy lifting of your campaign. It will help you to focus on what really matters for the campaign. It will process all the data and give you all the recommendations. Here are a couple of examples from our platform that is already available. We will predict what would be the engagement of your content. We will rank it automatically so you know where to focus and which type of content you should spend money on and which type of content you should not spend money on. Because we've seen many, many examples all around the world where marketers are spending money on the wrong uh, content that they are posting. And that's pretty important. And then you would ask, Okay, so how much should I spend? How much should I put as my bidding into the system? We provide you that information as well because we are tracking almost $4 billion of ad spend all across the world in multiple verticals, in multiple countries. So you can actually see how much to spend and how is the performance is going to look like. And last but not least, you'll be able to see the strategy of your competitors. What are they promoting? Where are they spending the money? What uh, performance are they getting? Where am I stand comparing to my market? Where do I stand against my competitors? So you'll start to be smart and the system will do that automatically for you. But organic post and paid post is one way to reach your audience. As I mentioned earlier, there is an alternative way to reach your audience. And this is, of course, using influencers. 
influencers is a new way to approach your audience in multiple uh, um, channels. And the most successful one that drives engagement, as we saw before, is Instagram. And we looked about influencer in Instagram. And as you can see over here, there are a couple of influencers that have over 100 million people that follow them. We call them the mega influencers. But with every consumer platform, you would see a chart that looks like this, that there are very few mega influencers that will be quite costly to work with. These are going to be influencers that you can see here on the line. But there are many other influencers that have 10,000, 100,000, 500,000 followers, and there are plenty of them. And that's going to be the trainer in your neighborhood. That's going to be the chef. That's going to be the local celebrity that you're working with. And we have here one of the more successful influencer in this region that's going to share with you her story. And that's going to be a very, very interesting presentation. So when you think about influencers, what do you need to consider? The first thing that you need to consider is the interest of their audience. Is their audience interest match your audience interest? Because if you want to use them as a channel, you want to communicate the message, you want to make sure there is a correlation between your audience and their audience. And the second question you want to ask yourself, are these real people? Are these real followers? So these are not bots and this is not fake because we've seen that quite a lot. You want to make sure you, you are working with a real person and real followers that actually engaging with them. That will be a great channel for you and will show a lot of results. And obviously, you want to measure all of that. You want to measure that that particular post or that particular message that the influencer were posting actually engaging your audience and you actually seeing the impact on your business that you are looking for. Measurement, matching audiences, and making sure that this is all working is part of what you need to do when working with influencers. So I would like to make our second very, very exciting announcement today. And this is the second addition to our platform that's going to be available in the second quarter. And this is influencer marketing as part of the Social Baker platform. This is an amazing addition to our platform. We already identified 20 million influencers just on Instagram. We already process all their data. We know where are they, what languages they speak, what interests do they have. We know if they're actually getting engagement for their audiences. We're seeing the trend. We are getting them the ranking of their content and how they're relevant to you. So going back to the audiences uh, component that I mentioned earlier, you'll be able to select the person you want to target. And with a click on a button, you'll get automatic recommendations for the influencers that you should look at. That they are the one that will be a channel, authentic channel to your audiences. And using our existing functionality, you will be able to measure the performance of these influencers uh, uh, against your uh, content and against your audiences. And you'll have micro-influencers, micro-influencers, really depend on the territories, really depend on the languages, really depend on how far do you want to go. We've seen successful marketers with micro-influencers, we've seen successful marketers with micro-influencers, micro and that's pretty, pretty in interesting. And if you want to be part of this, and if you want to have access to this platform, Write down this URL, socialbaker.com slash beta. You can go and register right now, and we'll give you access to this model before anyone else. This is a very, very exciting announcement for us, taking us to a complete different level from where we've been. And I'd like to share with you now a very nice video showing a successful agency that took advantage of influencers, understand their audiences, and run a very smart campaign and seeing the success. Vox Fashion Night Out is the event of the industry of fashion. And we have turned it into a platform so that people can come, meet the editors, meet the personalities, the influencers, to know the brand, the experience, the stores. To be part of it, they don't want to stay just watching. Not only do we focus on the influencers, but the brand and the experience, the editorial support, but we also give the people who can come to the event a chance to meet the brand, the experience, the stores. To be part of it, they don't want to stay just watching. Not only do we focus on the influencers, but the brand and the experience, the editorial support, but we also give the y en este caso, las redes sociales son la ventana más, más poderosa que tenemos. 
y también creo que somos la plataforma más importante para impulsar nuestra región, para impulsar México, Latinoamérica y darlo a conocer al mundo. Ese feeling que tiene que tener el editor sigue siendo muy importante, pero se avala con data. Desde que sabemos qué es lo que más le interesa al, al usuario, dejamos de enfocarnos en, en cuestiones que a lo mejor nosotros consideramos prioritarias, pero que finalmente eh, al, no estaban conectando con, con el usuario. No nada más a la hora de hacer el contenido, sino también saber mucho más sobre nuestro, nuestra audiencia y hacia dónde vamos. Gracias a la data que obtuvimos de Social Bakers, pudimos redefinir la, la estrategia que teníamos. Con todo ese esfuerzo en las redes sociales, logramos ser trending topic durante siete horas en la Ciudad de México y, y en toda la República. Mantenerse durante tanto tiempo como, como tendencia no es algo regular. De nada sirve tener una buena data si no, le, no uno la interpretas correctamente y luego la ejecutas. Y también pues, la alianza que hicimos con Social Bakers para que nos ayudaran a estar monitoreando qué es lo que estaba pasando, los momentos clave que tendríamos que estar publicando y, que, y revisando y, y, y no esperarnos al día siguiente a ver ah, si funcionó, no funcionó, eh, hubo un pico o no hubo un pico. Lo estamos viendo en el momento. Eh, básicamente nos estamos renovando y cuestionando el status quo todos los días. Fue que decidimos integrar Facebook Live y Periscope. Teníamos la oportunidad de tomarte una portada de Vogue. Bueno, había colas de 45 minutos para que te pintara Scarlett Bailey. Ese es el, el concepto del, del evento, vivirlo. Que nuestros consumidores, que nuestros lectores y nuestra audiencia pueda ver a un condenado hacia los cinco títulos que tenemos en México y Latinoamérica en la plataforma, en el device o en, el, en, en donde puedan y donde quieran. El que, que estemos apostando muchísimo en digital no significa que no estamos apostando en print, todo lo contrario. El objetivo es que se complemente, no que se copie. Para generar tráfico a, pues, a nuestros sitios web, ¿no? que al fin y al cabo es donde se pone toda la información y donde estamos eh, cuidando muchísimo nuestra experiencia de usuario. Al hablar de una calidad de un evento como es Vogue Fashion Night Out, todo el mundo quiere ir. Que no solo informe, sino que entretenga y genere, genere una emoción que el usuario quiera participar en, en, en la conversación. Súper importante que tengan el mensaje de la revista. Siento que hablar de cosas relevantes, no solo de moda, eh, en la revista para mí es súper importante. La moda está en todo. Vaya, en todos los aspectos en, lo, en los que nos movemos, ¿no? Creo que Vogue se trata de un estilo de vida, de dónde comes, dónde viajas. Eh, y no, no tenerlo lejano y que recuerden eh, durante esa experiencia, esa conexión, eh, este lado emotivo a través de, de marcas eh, tan importantes que luego la gente la siente distante. Demostramos que no es así. Y bueno, eso hizo que si vemos un poco en los últimos cuatro años, de 2014 a 2017, las impresiones crecieron 280%, cerrando casi en 262 millones de impresiones, que es un, es un récord, ¿no? Nuestra estrategia es continuar siendo los líderes que somos. La calidad ha existido en, en Condenaz por más de 100 años, ¿no? Y eso es algo que continuará.